Hey everyone, Liz Justice here with the Personal Development Network. I'm here to talk to you today about the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, um, a long-standing classic in the area of personal development and um, being becoming successful in general. Um, this book is kind of, just sum it up in one sentence, um, or even just one idea, this book is essentially the law of attraction. Um, it talks about how what you hold in mind tends to manifest. <laughs> this is one thing that's silly. I didn't realize that the title itself means um, not like think and do smart things and become rich, but think rich, become rich. So that's exactly what he means in that title is it says it all right there. Um, but basically, he talks about how your thoughts tend to manifest. So if you think positive and um, and think of things that you want to happen, they are more likely to happen. And if you think negative and think of things you don't want to happen, those things that you don't want to happen are more likely to happen. So basically, just to sum it all up, it's... Um, it's essential to have control of your thoughts and to think positive and to be um, persistent and you will be successful. It says in the book, when you put all your efforts behind your desires, you are sure to get them. And what that basically means is you can, you have to burn your boats. If you are putting a little bit of your effort somewhere else, but you know, your desires are on the other side and you're putting 10% this way and then 90% towards your desires, you, you're you not for sure going to get them. You could, but um, if you put all of your efforts behind it and, and basically cut off all other options, you're going to get there or you're going to die. So um, chances are you're going to get there. Okay, so another thing Napoleon Hill talks about is you can't give up um, if you have any kind of setback. And I know that a lot of us think, that's obvious, you can, of course you can't. Like the first time something bad happens, you give up. You can't, that's not, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, but there's a lot of times, like if you want to be very successful in something, um, like you, you are probably going to have to endure quite a bit of pain on the road to that success. Because you have to learn and... Um, while we tend, we do learn from others, our best learning opportunities are when we mess up ourselves. And so the mistakes that you make um, are going to be painful and they're going to be hard to persevere through, but you have to understand that those mistakes are learning opportunities and this is how you are going to get better and be successful at your goal. All right, so Mr. Hill gives us six steps to turn desire into gold. And uh, these steps are step one, know exactly what you want. If you want to have $10 million, put down, I want to have $10 million. What's really better is I want to have $10 million so that I can be supportive of this charity or I can send my kids to private school and we can live in a nice neighborhood. I can do you know, know what you want to do with the money, not just that you want to have money. Because the whole point of money is the that it's a resource. It doesn't, you know, the more re, it's a it's a path for you to do other things, and it's a path for you to do good. And so, if you have a powerful, good motivation behind, I want ten million dollars, you're more likely to get it than if you just are trying to collect money. Um, number two. Know what you will give in return for the money. And this isn't like the clear detail path, but just know um, I'm going to invest in real estate and I'm going to um, increase the value of neighborhoods. And that's how, that's my, what I'm going to give in return for it. Um, so not the detail plan, but like what your overarching, what you are going to give in return for the money because you cannot get something for nothing. People win the lottery and the lottery ruins their life. It happens all the time. So there's a show called The Lottery Ruined My Life. Um, people who win the lottery and it doesn't ruin their life, they probably started realizing if I need to keep, if I want to keep this money, I need to trade something for it. So they put effort into it. All right, number three, know when you will possess the money. This one, um, 
is so easy to overlook but so critical because if you say I want to have 10 million dollars and you don't give a date guess what you're gonna do I'll work on that next week I'll work on that later I'm not gonna figure out a plan for it because it's it's there's no deadline so for example um, we're looking at private schools for our kids and guess what I need to have the date the money that I need for to private school tuition by the day that she starts school or whenever the tuition is due the month before I don't know when it's due um, but I am gonna know the amount of tuition I'm gonna need and I know when I'm gonna need it that's a hard deadline that's easy to stick to but if you can give yourself a hard deadline you've made a clear decision that you are going to get that money so you're more sure of it and then it's a lot easier for you to to figure out the plans to get that money um, number four then is create a plan to, and begin now so like I said if you don't have that hard deadline even a hard deadline that you put on yourself but it's important to have a deadline um, you are less likely your brains less likely to come up with a plan because it's gonna focus on the other stuff that you're focusing on um, all the day-to-day -day things in, in your brain subconsciously is not going to work towards that plan but he talks about how if you say these are the things I want and then um, work on auto suggestion on training your brain to focus on these things your brain will come up with a plan a lot of people call this um, inspiration plans just come to people all the time and um, you have to be willing to listen to your brain when that inspiration strikes you and say yep that's that's my plan so he says create a plan but when he talks more about it he actually gives you direction to uh, tell your brain I want this money I want it by this date and this is what I'm gonna trade for it and then let your brain come up with a plan and, um, and another thing amazing about this book is that he talks about tapping into infinite knowledge and um, our thoughts are vibrations and we can connect to each other through our thoughts a lot more than we realize that we can because they are our thoughts are physical things and so he talks about there's this infinite knowledge out there and if you believe in it and trust in it and you do those first three steps and let your brain talk to this infinite knowledge just let it connect to it just let your subconscious work it will deliver a plan and especially if you have that date it will deliver a plan for you because you have decided and you are for sure going to make this happen your brains like alright here here you go and so it will connect to the right source of knowledge to get you a plan in place to do that uh, so then step five is to write out your desires your desires and your plans so write out each of those four steps in detail and step six is to read that statement aloud that you wrote in five two times a day so before when you get up in the morning when you go to bed so that you are always focused on your goals and that you're it's not something that you're kind of letting slip um, and become unimportant to you so it's always right at the forefront it's the beginning of the it's how you start your day it's how you're in your day and you are able to focus on achieving those goals kind of um, some of the things you need to be able to draw up that plan is you have to have a definiteness of purpose you have to know what you are meant for what you are meant to do while you're on this earth um, so that is your your step two I feel like um, for what are you gonna trade for it what is it that you can offer of value and what what's something that means something to you so um, to me this is this is something that kind of takes maturity to figure out um, so you know there are 60 year olds that are immature and 20 year olds that are very mature so I can't give you an age of when this is gonna happen but as uh, you are more open to outside perspectives and you're open to um, events in the world and you, then you can kind of it's easier to discover what your passion is and once you know your passion it's easy to know what you're meant for um, so if like in the past I've had so many like passions things that I've enjoyed but um, I don't know if I would call them true passions but uh, for me um, when I started really helping people as part of my career I realized that 
helping people is a true passion of mine. I want to help people be happy. I want people to achieve their success. I love to see people achieve things. And so I, I realized that that is my definiteness of purpose is to help people improve their lives. Um, so to me, like that's, that makes it easy to do step two of my plan and, and my brain makes it easy to do step four of my plan. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, definiteness of purpose is very helpful. Um, but I don't think that, I think that without that definiteness of purpose, you can definitely start on your path and you're likely to, um, run into and discover your definiteness of purpose, your, what you're meant to be if you start on that path. He talks about the major attributes of leaders. I just, he had, he listed 11 of them. Um, but I'll just say to me, the ones that I found most important were to have courage, to have self-control, um, to have, to be decisive and confident in your decisions because it's not, it's not decisiveness. If you change your mind pretty quickly, you have to make quick decisions, change them slowly and have a willingness to assume full responsibility. Um, without that willingness to assume full responsibility for your mistakes and even the mistakes of others that, that, that ownership that Grant Cardone talks about in 10 next rule, um, you won't ever learn from mistakes. So very important to take ownership of your mistakes and even mistakes of others. How did I contribute to that mistake? If it's somebody that you've been working with, what could I have done to make this better? So don't, don't look for ways to blame other people. Look for ways to take blame and you will be able to overcome mis these same mistakes in the future, these same problems in the future. Whereas if you blame others, these things are just going to keep happening to you. Um, he also talks about some causes of failure and just as a lot of other um, like self-assessment stuff in the book, I think it's really good because he suggests taking inventory of yourself on a regular basis and looking for opportunities that you have to improve yourself as a person. Um, and so he has some like really well-defined lists that, that you can go over and, um, and it helps you, it helps give you like a, a systematic way to take inventory of yourself. So I thought that was really cool. Another uh, thing he talks about for assessing yourself, um, he talks about the six fears that are most likely to prevent people from being successful. Those are poverty, criticism, health issues, loss of love, old age, and death. I think we all know that fear prevents success because you're not likely to take risks if you're afraid. Um, so for me, the biggest one is, that I'm afraid of is criticism. And I think that this is fairly normal in society today. <clears throat> People are judged so much. Um, but this one, it's, it's easy to get over by flipping it around and say, the person that's judging me probably has an insecurity in the area in which they're judging me. So, um, you know, I, I can have empathy for that person having that insecurity. You know, criticism is one of those things that um, I think we've all lived with. And I mean, we certainly pile it on celebrities. And why do we criticize celebrities? Because some people feel bad seeing other people achieve great success and celebrities have a lot of time, I mean, we're in reality TV days, but a lot of times celebrities have achieved great success. Um, people who have made it in Hollywood, I mean, you can't tell me that they didn't persevere through a lot of stuff to get their career in Hollywood. Um, and yet we just lump tons of criticism and ridicule about the littlest things. And guess what? We need to look in the mirror ourselves and we're criticizing people and realize that's a reflection of ourselves. It talks about using the mastermind. Um, don't put everything up to you. Have experts around you. Build up a mastermind team. So uh, my favorite part of the book when he's talked about reach out to infinite intelligence and he suggested, he said that um, he had a an invisible council. So he had people um, that he wanted to develop traits to be like them. He had them come to council meetings in his brain 
and he would run the council meetings, and he had all these people who uh, achieved amazing things. Yeah. Emerson, Edison, Lincoln, these are all people that he had come to this council in his, in his brain, and he would say, um, you know, Mr. Lincoln, you are, you are a man of great integrity and great strength. I want to learn these things from you, and I want you to tell me how I can, I can have great integrity and great strength. And uh, he said that he these meetings became very realistic, and all of these people that he had in his council were um, developed very strong personalities. Um, some of them were always late. I mean, like this is all going on in his brain. But um, I think what he was saying was he was tapping into this infinite knowledge that is out there and it's abundant and it's for everybody if you just let yourself believe it. So you aren't going to ever have all the answers like right just in your brain, but you can have all the answers just in reach and that infinite knowledge if you allow yourself to believe that it's there and allow yourself to tap into it. So um, super cool thought. And it was just really interesting that he had these just super intense council meetings with these people, many of whom he had never met. Some of them were dead before he started having them. So to sum up, the book is The Law of Attraction with some self-help stuff, um, so directions on taking personal inventory and looking for areas to improve yourself, and some directions on, on how to achieve uh, success through six simple steps. Um, I think it's a really helpful book to read and I think it just reaffirms for me how important it is to hold positive thoughts in mind and to keep focused on my goals. So I definitely recommend it. It's, uh, and it's a quick read. So it's definitely worth putting on your list of books to read to become, help you become successful. Next video I'm going to do on Rich Dad, Poor Dad, super important book to me. It's what really changed how I thought about money and put me on the path that I'm in on now that is just a fantastic path. I'm just so happy to be on this path. Um, so I will be doing that probably uh, two weeks from now. So um, if you want to know when that comes out, click on the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell icon and be sure to like this video if you felt it was helpful. See you guys next time. Bye.